Hello, I'm Cody Whipple with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Welcome back to our Making Connections series of videos. The following video is going to be all about wetlands. So when we're talking about making the connection between your trout in the classroom aquarium and a wetland, the main piece of equipment that we're going to discuss is your aquarium filter. And your filter does exactly that. It filters out your aquarium water and it can do so via three main pathways they are mechanical filtration chemical filtration and biological filtration now a wetland it also filters water and even though it's a little bit more complex it can also do so via the same three pathways so the first one that we're going to discuss is mechanical filtration you'll notice that inside of your filter you've got a lot of sponges what those sponges do is function in slowing down the water velocity. While they do that, all of the pores within those sponges can trap a lot of that large particulate organic matter that otherwise you wouldn't want coming straight out of the filter and right back into your aquarium water where your trout reside. A wetland can also filter out water and physically remove it through mechanical filtration because it also slows down that water velocity giving all of that organic particulates matter as well as sediment the opportunity to settle down into the substrate or into the bottom of that wetland so we'll actually reach down in here and grab some of that substrate and you'll notice it's mucky a wetland is known for having a, a mucky bottom that's because all of that sediment that's coming from Pennsylvania's waterways is filtering out into that wetland before it has the opportunity to make it to one of Pennsylvania's lakes or one of Pennsylvania's streams. This is also a great decomposive environment which can help to transform a lot of the harmful pollutants into something that is less harmful. So all of the vegetation that is in that wetland also functions in slowing down that water velocity, giving all of that sediment the opportunity to settle out. The next thing we're going to talk about is that chemical filtration. So a lot of you will notice that you have carbon inside of your aquarium filter. So that carbon functions in chemically binding a lot of the harmful pollutants that could otherwise just be right inside your aquarium. Aquatic vegetation can also chemically bond harmful pollutants before it has the opportunity to make it into one of Pennsylvania's streams or one of Pennsylvania's lakes. So the last one that we're going to talk about is one that you should all be familiar with and that is that biological filtration. So a lot of you are aware of the nitrogen cycle and the beneficial bacteria that's required to convert ammonia into less toxic nitrate that you need in order for your trout to survive. When that water enters a wetland, it has the opportunity to be subject to that beneficial bacteria for even longer. So a lot of those harmful nutrients can then be converted biologically through that bacteria into something less harmful before it actually enters the waterway. So wetlands are one of the most productive ecosystems in the United States. They provide tons of great habitat and a great ecosystem for a lot of organisms that rely on them in order for them to survive and thrive as well. Unfortunately, in the United States, we've lost over 50% of our wetlands since the 1950s. So that's something that you definitely want to think about. If we didn't have these wetlands, anytime there's a lot of rain, uh, a heavy storm, or some flooding, if all of that water was just subject to go right into Pennsylvania's waterways without that filtration, then an the water quality throughout our entire nation would definitely be degraded. That's why wetlands are extremely important and it's a really good idea to link those wetlands back to the trout that you keep directly in your classroom. 